What's going on, football fans? Today is Friday, January 26th. I'm Kevin Carroll. He's Joe Soprano, and we are, of course, TLSportsBetting.com. Everything you need to get ready for a good football weekend. We're running out of good football weekends, but we do have a doozy this weekend. The NFC and AFC Championship games, two of the final three NFL football games we'll get this year, two of the final football games until uh, the XFL, USFL, UFL, whatever. Oh, whatever I'm excited about is. the XFL. You'll be want to tune into our XFL preview uh, video oh, that we'll be launching in just a couple of weeks. Oh no, and, and <laughs> we, it, we could do that. Then, then we're gonna we're gonna go on XFL uh, uh, camp visits. We're gonna vi visit each one of the XFL's campsites. I, I promise to be really psyched about the it's the UFL. Oh, you're right. You're right. For about two weeks, I'll give you two weeks of my best for that. But um, we've still got a couple weeks left here in the NFL, and we got two really interesting, really fun-looking uh, conference championship games: Ravens, Chiefs in the AFC, Lions, Niners in the NFC. That AFC game was first, so I'll start it off. I'm taking the Ravens, so I got this number at three and a half, but it's up to four by now, and I'm I'm, I'm okay with you getting it to four. I don't see too terribly much of a difference between three and a half and four, as opposed to it for like three and three and a half. But I like the Ravens here, and I know that the stats on Mahomes as an underdog are amazing. He's 9-1-1 one, and one in his career as an underdog against the spread. I believe he's 8-3 and three straight up against the spread, or straight up as an underdog. Uh, so that, that, that doesn't bode well for me, but I think the Ravens are just the, that team. They went a long stretch of this year where they were kind of quiet and no one was really paying too much attention to them. But I think now we're finally seeing and what they did with Houston last week. Houston, a good team that was playing really well. And the Ravens kind of just took care of them without much of a without much of a struggle. I think the Ravens are better on both sides of the ball. They have the best defense in the NFL, and their offense is is going to tax you in ways that they don't see to you know just don't get too often. The Chiefs did have a little bit of trouble last week containing Josh Allen. He had two rushing touchdowns. He was the Bills' leading rusher, and now you have Lamar who does that like to the max. He, he's going to run. He's going to do all sorts of things. He'll open things up. And another big thing for the Ravens is that uh, Mark Andrews is expected back. So you'll have two tight ends and two tight end sets when you're, you're already committing someone to look at Lamar and spy Lamar. And you put a two tight end guy out there that you kind of wreak havoc in the middle. I think that's, that's going to be too much for the Chiefs defense to handle. I think that, uh, I, I think that it's the Ravens time. I feel, I don't know, you're not, I don't know if you've seen any of these, but, uh, I've seen a lot of videos online of people legitimately like praying to Lamar Jackson to save them from Pat Mahomes, which I think is unfair because I think Pat Mahomes is great, and I think it's not his fault that he's good enough to play in six straight AFC title games, but I've seen a lot of people literally making videos like praying to Lamar Jackson. I'm going to pray to Lamar Jackson. I think he'll answer those prayers. Uh, I think he delivers a Super Bowl appearance for the Baltimore Ravens. Well, you make a lot of fine points there. Unfortunately, I think you're wrong. All right. Tell me why. Well, first of all, I've got the Chiefs, obviously, because I said I think you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> one, one of the big reasons I'm taking the Chiefs is I'm just tired of hearing about this goddamn Super Bowl logo conspiracy. Oh, that's right. First of all, it's not even accurate. Last year, the Philadelphia Eagles went to the Super Bowl. Their color is green. As a matter of fact, it's a dark green. The color in the Super Bowl logo Aqua. It's a shade of blue. It is not green. You know who wears aqua? The Miami Dolphins. So if you're sitting there and saying that the, the colors matched last year, what you're saying is the Dolphins and the Eagles wear the same color uniforms. That's how stupid you are saying that conspiracy theory. So let's stop that. But anyhow, I like the Chiefs. I think it's going to be a close game. I don't know the Chiefs are going to win the game. I think that number and that number's been moving all week. It started at three, it's up to four. That means the smart money supposedly is going on the Chiefs, all the sharps as they call them. But I just like Pat Mahomes. He's been here before. He 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 knows how to play well in big games. Uh, I want to see Lamar Jackson prove it to me before I actually put money on him uh, winning a big game. Uh, but I think that he may win this game. I think it's gonna be a close game, though. I think it's gonna be a field goal game. Uh, I think the Chiefs are gonna be able to score. I think the uh, the Ravens are going to be able to score. I think it's going to be a shootout. And it uh, might be one of those games like last week, last team with the ball wins. Uh, so I'm going with the experience in the Chiefs. We're going to have to break out the Pantone grid here to check those colors in that logo. You're getting in. You're getting really into the nitty-gritty with the logo. Uh, it's experience. just so ridiculous. I, I, I'm fed up with it. But You were, you were drawing like, some reactions from our crowd out there. Yeah, <laughs> I sure saw people getting angry. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. Yeah, no, I like it. Uh, and, and yeah, the, that line's been moving. I will point out that the uh, the early public money was on the Ravens and the public. I know you, if you're into gambling, you can't, you'll, you'll hear the refrain, fade the public a lot. Usually the public is bad. This year in the NFL, the public has been profitable for the first time in I don't know how many seasons, public money. So I, I kind of like that for me as well. Um, NFC Championship game, the Lions at the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, why don't you start us with this one? Yeah, all right. This is this is a game I could see I could see going either way. I could see the 49ers dominating this game and blowing out the Lions. I could see the Lions making it close. I don't think the Lions are going to win this game. I'd like to see them win this game simply because I think that's the best story of the four teams left playing yeah. for the Lions to go on and win the Super Bowl. I don't I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll lose this game, but I think they'll keep it close. I think it'll be within seven and a half. Uh, Jared Goff has not played great outdoors this season. He's 11-1 indoors. He's 3-2 outdoors. But still, outdoors, he's completing 63% of his passes. He's thrown more touchdowns than interceptions. So I think they'll be able to keep it close. Uh, Debo Samuel is still questionable last time I looked. If he doesn't play, that's a big difference in uh, in the 49ers offense. So you maybe you want to wait till right before game time to see if you, you can get updated status on Debo Samuel and whether or not he's going to play. But if he doesn't play, uh, I think the 49ers are going to have trouble on offense. I like this to be a close game, and I like the seven and a half, seven and a half points in the Lions. Yeah, I, I, I lean that way for sure. Um, and I, I was just – a little nervous about maybe a, a late turnover, a late like scoop and score or something the Niners do defensively to, to for, the, I, the back door seemed open. So I'm staying away from the spread. I'm taking the over here, 51 and a half points. Uh, last week when the Niners had Green Bay come into town, it was about this 50 and a half, just a point less. And I took the under because I thought the defenses would dictate that game. I see the opposite here for two reasons. I think the Lions offense is better than Green Bay's. I think they do a lot of things differently. And I took the Lions last week as well. I had that, and it got that right. So just you know, for the record, and I think that the uh, Lions' defense is not as good as Green Bay. So I think both offenses will have more room to operate than they did last week. I think that I think we're going to get a really fun game, a shootout type of game. They they might both these games might be shootouts, but I think this one, if if, if either of them really t- take on that role, I think it's this game. I don't know about Debo. I know he did return to practice yesterday. I haven't seen his practice report today. I have to imagine they're going to do everything to get him out there. And the thing with a guy like Debo, he's like he's like a true gadget player. Even if he's not getting the ball, if you put him out there and you just run him around, like he's going to command attention and the Niners it's been said all year they have so many weapons they could beat you with, with they could beat you with anybody McCaffrey obviously Brandon Ayuk Juwan Jennings and I think Purdy's going to make plays the way Purdy has you know he hasn't been perfect pretty much at all this year but he's made plays he made plays last week when they needed him to I think he'll make plays here and I think Jared Goff will make plays when they need him to see like you said like he hasn't been great outdoors but he's been fine outdoors three and two is not you know bad by any stretch I think both these teams will make plays I think it comes down to like you said for that last game, who gets the ball last? I don't know who it's going to be. I think the Niners probably win. I'd love to see the Lions win just because the Lions making the Super Bowl it would just be. It just doesn't sound right. It just sounds insane. Uh, it's going to be warm and sunny in Santa Clara. That game. That's a. It's a six o'clock Eastern, six thirty Eastern start. So what's that? Like three thirty out that way. Yeah. So it'll be nice and sunny as opposed to that rainstorm they played in last weekend. So I think it all just points to the over. I like points. I I, I, I can't take the under two weeks in a row. I feel like dirty. Well, you know, it, it, it's out in California, so if you're going to factor in the weather, you always have to worry about earthquakes. I, an earthquake, I, you're right. A, a, a major earthquake during this game, I think, if that happens, I, I think you'd be looking at the under. I, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll admit, I didn't look at, like, the Richter projections uh, before this game. That's on me. That's something I have to add to my bag as a gambler. But yeah, the over, the over, the over. Uh, should be two fun games though on Sunday and uh and a uh, fun uh, fun Saturday as well. We do have the Royal Rumble coming up. Well, well, who do you have in the Royal Rumble? The Royal Rumble, man. It comes down to two for me, guys. It's CM Punk, you know, coming back after ten years away. The last televised WWE match he wrestled was in the 2014 Royal Rumble. Then he walked out the next night. It would be so poetic for him to come back and win the Rumble and cash his tickets to WrestleMania, or it's Cody Rhodes. Sort of a similar thing. He he left WWE. He he had to blaze his own trail, start his own company. Now he's back and he, he's looking to finish the story. Is the is the turn of phrase he's been using? He wants to win the WWE Universal Championship in Philly at WrestleMania 40. The Royal Rumble is his best bet. I think those are the two. I don't know if anybody outside those two has a chance to win, unless something absolutely crazy happens. I'll say this: yeah. Don't overlook the Honky Tonk Man or George the Animal Steel. 
you you can't oh you cannot overlook the honky tonk man. I do believe George Steele's dead. Oh well then. Rest in peace. He, I, Sorry I, to hear that. The, the turnbuckle eating monster that was George the Animal, the George the Animal Steel, WWE Hall of Famer. I, I do believe he's dead. I don't know though. Actually, that now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure. And I hope I hope I'm not slandering his good living name if he is indeed alive. George, if you're out there, give us a call. I think he watches every week. He's yeah. probably in the comments. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll check that out. Well, I guess we'll find out next week if he's watching. And uh, again, I tune in next week to see how we did. And again, tlsportsbetting.com. You head there after you get done with this video. It's everything you need to get ready for conference championship weekend. And of course, as we get closer to Super Bowl weekend, there's going to be a whole lot of good stuff on there as well. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Again, enjoy the Royal Rumble, enjoy the AFC Championship game, enjoy the NFC Championship game, and have a great weekend.